The meerkat is a close relative of the mongoose. These cute animals live in the Kalahari and Namib deserts, as well as other regions of South Africa. The meerkat's body length is 25 to 35 centimeters, and its tail is 18 to 25 centimeters. The head and belly of the animal are very light, while the ears and the tip of the tail are black. The rest of the body is gray or reddish coloration. The slender slender limbs, elongated head, and dark spots around the eyes give the meerkat a comically touching appearance. His fur is not very thick, but it is quite long. Because of it meerkat seems heavier than, he is in fact the weight of this permanently disheveled creature or barely reaches 2 kilograms. Meerkats live in colonies of no more than 30 individuals. The meerkat colonies live in deep, branched burrows. Sometimes they dig them on their own, and sometimes easily occupy the shelter of another animal, for example, ground squirrel. Having developed communicative instincts, these animals negotiate with each other by means of vocal signals. Scientists estimate that there are at least 10 combinations in their sound series. These funny little animals have a habit of being on duty at the entrances to the burrows. Not without reason the locals call them the sentinels of the deserts. With their front legs folded on their stomachs and leaning slightly on their tails, the on-duty meerkat watches out for danger. In case of an abnormal situation, it immediately dives into a burrow, alerting congeners with a sharp whistle. Meerkats have excellent eyesight and sense of smell, they are good at running, jumping and climbing on trees and rocks. Nowadays, these touching babies are successfully kept in city apartments and country houses, they are wonderfully tame and may please the whole family for many years. The meerkats will not show any aggression towards humans. Gradually, gaining trust of your pet, you will bring up an affectionate and fluffy friend who will amuse you more than once with charming grimaces and jumps, will be able to take food from hands, respond to name, fawn and accompany your beloved master everywhere. Meerkats are social animals, so a person to whom they are used to, they perceive as part of their pack. And now, a couple of words about what these amazing furry babies represent. Type, Chore Dates Class, Mammals Division, Carnivorous Family, Wyvern Subfamily, Mongus, Herpestiny. The meerkat should not be confused with the mongus, however. This is a different species, both externally and physiologically. Interspecific hybridization between meerkats and monguses is not possible. The meerkat inhabits deserts, semi-deserts, and dry steppes throughout southern Africa, from Lake Chad to the foothills of the Cape of Good Hope, in Angola, Namibia, South Africa, Botswana, Zambia, and Zimbabwe. Suricats are well tame, and since ancient times Aborigines have often kept them as pets to kill snakes, poisonous insects and rodents. South African peoples believe that meerkats can protect their homes from werewolves, the moon devils. For this, and their habit of basking in the sun, while standing in a column, which literally makes their fur glow, meerkats are called sun angels. Their looks and habits are really angelic, charming and meek, amusing and good-natured, meerkats will not leave anyone indifferent and can cause a warm smile even to a skeptical cynic who cannot be surprised by anything. It is noteworthy that among meerkats reigns complete matriarchy. The dominant, the leader of the pack will always be the female, the founder of the family, or the strongest individual, who has taken the place of her aged, dead or departed from the clan predecessor. Why is a pack of meerkats called a clan? Usually, this small community is formed at the moment when a female in heat forms a pair with a male, and they have offspring. When they grow up, not all cubs leave the family, some stay, but some leave voluntarily in the hope to establish their own clan or are expelled from the pack for some mischief. If a meerkat fails to create its own family, it may die, so it will be forced to return to its own flock or join another clan, if it is accepted, of course. Cubs are usually born by a dominant female, but other clan members may have them as well, but whether they will be accepted or not is a matter of time and again. Alpha female can easily kill the newborns or get rid of them, chasing them away as soon as they grow up, but there are rare exceptions. At the same time, if a subordinate rather than a dominant female is pregnant, she may try to attack the cubs of her leader. The most striking thing is that conflicts between females may arise only at the moment of baby beating. 
and no matter how it ends, further relations between females and pack cohesion are not affected by the conflict. A mother who encroached on life of her babies can nurse both her own and others' children in a few days after she herself is separated from childbirth. And the universal mother, the leader, trusts her offspring to the one whose own children she has just killed. Today, meerkats are the only animals found to have such a paradoxical relationship. Watching the life of the meerkat clan is an extraordinarily fascinating activity. There are many movies and TV series that tell about the life of the little furry family. They are very popular and constantly broadcast on Discovery, National Geographic, Nat Geo Wild, Zoo and others. The meerkat's morning begins with a general formation as the animals emerge from their dens and first gather together, standing on their hind legs, to greet the rising sun. Then they exchange touching caresses, sniffing, caressing each other, funny somersaulting and wrestling, licking each other's fur. After that, the family, except for the young ones which haven't grown strong yet and don't leave their holes and feed on their mother's milk, starts eating, or, if there's no prey nearby, goes to their hunting fields. Having eaten, they can stand for long hours in a column or lie in the sand, sunbathing. The sentry always stays near the den. He rises to any hill having chosen the highest point for his post and watches the horizon. If a sentry notices a predator, he calls the whole flock together with a loud, sharp cry so that the clan has time to hide in the burrow and wait out the impending danger. Recent research by scientists has shown that meerkats have a system of vocal cues and gestures similar to our speech. For example, there are several alarm signals differing in their timbre. They tell us which predator is approaching and from where, a snake, a large animal or a bird, whether it is far away or comes very close and so on. The system of pedagogy of meerkats is also interesting. As soon as kids become more or less independent and need not only milk, but also other kinds of food, their nannies, they can be both females and males, take them for their first hunt. The youngest ones are given prey that has already been killed, older cubs are given prey that has been caught but is still alive, so that they can play with their prey and try to catch it, and teenagers are taught to hunt on their own. Just like their relative, the mongoose Ricky Tiki Tai described by Kipling, meerkats are able to deal with a poisonous snake while deftly avoiding its bite. But in most cases they prefer methodical digging in search of scorpions, small lizards, giant centipedes and other critters, instead of dangerous battles, anything they manage to catch goes for food. They like to eat eggs and chicks, as well as tender parts of plants and their bulbs. The diet of meerkats includes everything that cannot fight back, run away or fly away from them. This way of eating is common to many animals, but almost all of them prefer to get their food alone. It is easy to get such food, but it takes quite a lot, and it is simply impossible to divide tiny prey among several members of the pack. But meerkats also stand out among other omnivorous predators. They live and hunt as a family, combing every meter of land in their domain. One or two meerkats also stand guard while the other members of the family hunt for food without fear of enemies, making them much more efficient in their search for prey. But this practice has a significant disadvantage, a large family of meerkats soon destroys all the food resources in the area. In addition, due to the abundance of inhabitants, parasites quickly multiply in the burrow, complicating life and seriously damaging the health of the animals. Because of this, the family must periodically migrate a couple of kilometers to a new place. Usually, the meerkat clan has two or three burrows, so they quickly settle in a new place. When the time comes to build another dwelling or restore an abandoned one, meerkats dig the ground with the whole clan because a convenient entrance to a shelter or several entrances is first of all an opportunity to quickly hide from the enemy. During such construction, meerkats dig so diligently that earth or sand flies out from under their paws in a continuous stream, like on a conveyor belt. If animals choose rocky places where you can't dig a hole, they find a cave or a crevice in the stones and settle down in it. Most likely, this nomadic lifestyle is the reason for such strong family ties among meerkats in one clan. When the borders of a pack's domain are constantly changing, wars with neighboring families often break out, and success in these confrontations largely depends on family unity. 
On sighting enemies, the whole family of meerkats stand shoulder to shoulder, tucking their tails up and bouncing on the spot to scare off the intruders. If that does not work, they will dash into battle, each member of the clan feeling the support of the other. But this disciplined performance is only effective against their neighbors, and there is only one escape from natural enemies, jackals and birds of prey. One of the best places to see meerkats is the Tswalu Kalahari Game Reserve. Up to 70 species of mammals, including meerkats, live here. If you wish, you can even book a special meerkat mania tour in the Kalahari Desert, you can also go to the meerkats of Kalagadi Transfrontier Park. It is noteworthy that these animals are so accustomed to tourists that they easily let themselves be petted without any fear of approaching people and willingly accept their tasty gifts. So, going on such a trip, do not forget to take a camera or camcorder to capture this unforgettable event. In home conditions, when there is no danger, meerkats feel at ease and all their attention is focused on their curious search for something tasty or interesting, their own order in the house, their merry pranks and contacts with people.